Today's headline takes us to the heart of China, where President Xi Jinping has issued a unique call echoing across the nation. In response to what's being labeled a sexual recession, she has taken on a role that goes beyond statesmanship, he's become an advocate for love, marriage, and the intricate dance of demographics. In a recent meeting, she conveyed a message that goes beyond the typical rhetoric of a head of state. He spoke of women having a unique role, a phrase pregnant with implications. It's not just a call to increase the number of weddings, it's an invitation for women to play a pivotal role in the restoration of family life in China. What lies at the heart of this call? She envisions a society where children can grow up healthily, surrounded by the harmony of a family, enriched by good family education, and grounded in correct family traditions. It's not merely about increasing the headcount, it's about fostering an environment that cultivates the well-being and growth of the next generation. But can a call for matrimony alone reverse the trends of a sexual recession? She doesn't think so. He advocates for a more profound shift, an active fostering of a new culture in marriage and childbearing. This isn't just a plea for more weddings, it's a strategic maneuver to contribute to China's modernization, mobilizing women as active agents of societal change. Xi's message is not merely a plea for more weddings, it's a call to guide women in becoming the custodians of cultural preservation. Xi's vision extends far beyond the realm of romantic unions. In his recent meeting, he articulated a profound message, that women have a unique role, a role that extends beyond the confines of domesticity and permeates the very fabric of societal values. The call to guide women is not a directive to follow a predetermined script but an invitation to become torchbearers of tradition. She envisions a society where women actively participate in carrying forward the rich tapestry of traditional Chinese values. Building good family traditions becomes not just a suggestion but a crucial element in the narrative of societal evolution. Creating new trends in family civilization is not a mere nod to changing fashions, it's a call for women to become architects of a cultural renaissance. It's about infusing modernity with the essence of tradition, a delicate dance between the old and the new. President Xi's emphasis on a harmonious family, good family education, and correct family traditions is a symphony of ideals aimed at creating an environment conducive to healthy child growth. It's a vision that transcends individual marriages, reaching into the very essence of societal structures. Some voices argue that the CCP's claim regarding women is steeped in political interest rather than a true dedication to liberation. The phrase, half the sky, sounds poetic, but critics, including former Chinese political consultative conference member Wang Ruiqin, question the substance behind the slogan. It's a debate that goes beyond semantics and delves into the tangible steps taken to uplift women in Chinese society. Wang asserts that the CCP falls short in providing fundamental solutions to overcome low birth rates. Liberation of women isn't merely about slogans, it requires concrete measures. The absence of robust employment and welfare protections, coupled with uncovered costs of raising children, raises legitimate concerns about the efficacy of the proclaimed narrative. While the government has increased rhetoric on sharing the duty of child-rearing, the practical implementation, especially in the form of paternity leave, remains limited in most provinces. It's a paradox, advocating for shared responsibilities while the tools to enable such practices are yet to be universally implemented. Chinese women continue to face significant barriers in the labor market, from limited job opportunities to the pervasive fear of pregnancy discrimination. This fear is not unfounded, as the costs and challenges of balancing work and family life weigh heavily on working mothers. As we navigate the economic landscape, a significant subplot emerges, employment barriers faced by Chinese women. Beyond the romantic ideals, the harsh reality is that women encounter formidable obstacles in the labor market. Limited job opportunities and a pervasive fear of pregnancy discrimination create a challenging environment for women striving to balance career aspirations with family planning. The concept of paternity leave, while gaining attention in the rhetoric of shared responsibilities, remains a limited reality in most provinces. It's akin to inviting someone to a dance but forgetting to provide the music. The aspirations of shared child-rearing responsibilities clash with the practicalities of workplace policies. China's economic crisis has birthed a generation of young people who are hitting the pause button on traditional life milestones. Marriage, parenthood, and homeownership, once considered societal norms, now face a generation that prioritizes economic stability over these traditional markers of adulthood. It's a shift from the conventional anthem of love to a new refrain centered around financial security. High unemployment rates further compound the complexities of China's love and economic narrative. Economic uncertainties have created a generation that is not only avoiding marriage and having children but also deferring the dream of owning a home. 
The national anthem has shifted from a love ballad to a financial forecast, where economic stability takes center stage. As we dissect the nuances of this economic dance, we must ponder, can romance and economics find a harmonious duet, or are we witnessing a ballad of missed connections? How will economic uncertainties shape the choices of China's youth, and can policies bridge the gap between love and financial stability?